Hey everyone, it's Flackfire. After three years of Battlefield 5, I was really hopeful that Battlefield 2042 would be a return to form for the franchise. I had hoped that DICE and EA had been taking feedback from players and was really trying to understand what it was that made Battlefield special. And uh, instead, we're left with what arguably is one of the most frustrating Battlefield experiences I have ever played. With Battlefield 2042, things confound me at every turn, and they range from performance and gameplay to general design decisions. And uh, This is going to be a bit of a longer video, so while I talk about it, I've just got some random Battlefield 2042 gameplay here in the background. So, performance-wise, Battlefield 2042 is unreliable. For those on PC, frame rates have been an issue, many players struggling to get smooth visuals, even on computers with relatively decent specs. Console players have reported numerous stability issues, with the game crashing and sometimes even failing to boot. Now, personally, I haven't experienced those issues. I've been playing on a brand new PC with a 3070 in it. A uh, really nice system, but I have seen it happen live to other players, and that is frustrating to watch. I don't think it's unreasonable to expect a smooth experience from a AAA game, especially one that costs $70. Battlefield 2042 is being marketed as a finished game, after all. Similarly, connection issues have been present for launch. That's something incredibly frustrating. Rubber banding was a problem during early access, right? Players would suddenly find themselves trapped in invisible jello, and although that issue has largely been addressed, it continues to rear its head on a rare occasion. Hit registration remains an issue, however. I've had several instances where I'd be visibly hitting an enemy soldier with no effect, and uh, suddenly I would just get shot and killed by the very same player. Matchmaking is hit or miss as well. Sometimes I will find myself in European servers with a ping over 120 or fighting enemies that are clearly not on the same continent as me. Uh, it doesn't really make for a pleasant experience in that regard. Uh, with actual gameplay, there are a lot of bugs that pose serious problems for players, and among the most egregious is the downed player bug, which leaves you stuck in a downed state. I want to point out that this is a bug that we've seen in previous Battlefield games, though I'm not sure if it has the same root cause. Uh, it is just annoying now as it was back then, though. Uh, if it happens, you have no choice, you're just going to have to leave the server, and that's not ideal uh, at all. A separate bug won't let you revive players when they are close to other objects in-game. Now, thankfully, DICE have a fix for this on the way, but it seems like something that should have been discovered and resolved in testing. Another bug results in you joining a server but being unable to spawn, and this has no workaround uh, since we don't have a server browser. I've seen that happen to players on Twitch and YouTube, and it was one of those things that was just kind of uh, cringe to watch happen. Some other frustrating issues revolve around actions in-game. Uh, for example, I still encounter regular stutters or warping with takedown animations, right? Uh, but the most annoying for me is what I picked up on as an input bug. Battlefield 2042 will routinely miss inputs. I don't know if that's exactly what's happening there, but for example, I cannot reliably enter or exit a vehicle. Sometimes the game just ignores commands to change weapons or switch to equipment, and uh, naturally I die in the ensuing confusion, and that is quite irritating. I really, in a way, feel betrayed by the game, and you get a similar feeling fighting with the game's weapon bloom mechanics. It remains to be seen if some of those are bugged, but there's a reason why guns like the PP-29 are so prolific in the game right now, right? Uh, they actually work. Other weapons become ridiculously inaccurate soon after firing. I loved DMRs in previous Battlefield games, but they really struggle because of the bloom mechanic in Battlefield 2042. I think a lot of people were spoiled by gunplay in Battlefield 5, where the bullet supposedly goes right where the reticle is when the gun is fired. In Battlefield 2042, it's wholly unpredictable. 
Meanwhile, the HUD for the anti-air launcher is bugged and you have to pop in and out of Zoom to get it to work properly. Um, it just doesn't work the way it's intended. And with how strong uh, some of the air vehicles are in Battlefield 2042, uh, that obviously is a frustrating experience. And I also want to say even things that should be simple don't quite work as expected. Um, I know it's more of a design decision, but the vehicle controls in Battlefield 2042 are mapped noticeably different than those in previous games. No rationale given for the change either. Uh, I have, and I'm sure you have as well, experienced an instant WTF moment when you hop in a helicopter and uh, suddenly your years of flying them in Battlefield 4 are completely irrelevant because the controls aren't the same. It doesn't feel good. Uh, I'm also frustrated that traditional classes in Battlefield 2042 got the boot. Aside from both teams sharing the same basic character models, as you would imagine, that isn't particularly helpful, you have very little idea what other players, friend or foe, are capable of. I have no idea if they're carrying a rocket launcher or a health crate. This means if I need ammo or health, I literally scream into the void hoping that somebody has it equipped. Uh, I also have no idea if there are any issues with the team build. Right? If we look at previous Battlefield games, I could check to see, for example, how many medics or engineers uh, were on the team. Right? If there was a lack of them, uh, I could spawn as one and contribute. And I can't do that in Battlefield 2042. A big reason for it is that there is no actual scoreboard for me to check that. Uh, and it is mind-boggling that a proper scoreboard does not exist in the game. And even more so that apparently that was a deliberate decision. I have reportedly noticed feedback on the topic, but I cannot comprehend how an FPS game can cut something so integral to competition from the game. Uh, at this point, why do we even have victories or losses in games? Right? Just give everybody a participation trophy or participation XP. Uh, this also frustrates me because it masks any issues with cheaters. I've yet to spot anyone in the game I presume to be cheating, but I cannot check. Battlefield 2042 lacks a kill cam with a spectator function, and the lack of a proper scoreboard makes it very difficult to identify the most telltale sign of a cheater in ridiculous KDR. Lastly, for gameplay, and this is probably my biggest issue, uh, with 128 players on the field, combat is wholly unpredictable. It's impossible to find any sense of a front line, and it often feels like you're being shot from every direction. Action rolls across the map like the very tornadoes that Dyson EA tout in the game's marketing. On the rare occasion you find a flank, you're going to be shot in the back by somebody who has no earthly business being where they are. They're simply there because they're either lost on the gigantic maps or they're just straggling into the action because they've been walking from objective to objective. If you find yourself in the heat of the action, you're probably going to get overwhelmed by sheer numbers, no matter how good you are. Uh, so predictability is minimal, and like it or not, that is a core aspect of what makes games enjoyable. And I hate the fact that when I say that, it makes me sound like a boomer, but if you don't believe me, you can always listen to David Serland, who is one of the Battlefield producers uh, who left DICE after Battlefield 5. Uh, you know, he says personally he believed that 48 players on 64 player loadouts was the sweet spot for Battlefield. Um, if you don't like that answer, you can listen to former CEO Patrick Soderland. Uh, he may have been off the mark on previous comments regarding Battlefield 5, but he revealed back in the Battlefield 3 days that DICE actually looked into 128 players even more uh, than that, 256, and technically they can do it, but the critical info he disclosed here was that they did actual research and discovered exactly what I'm telling you here, that it's not that fun. Now, why they changed their tune for Battlefield 2042 is anyone's guess. Personally, I think that 64 players is perfect for Battlefield, and I back this up 
with my own testing in Portal and Battlefield 2042, running custom games, polling feedback from players. Uh, the smaller maps with traditional player counts generally were received as more enjoyable. However, players on PC or next-gen consoles don't have this as an official option outside of Portal. Battlefield 2042 funnels players through the UI into either 128 player breakthrough or 128 player conquest. You don't even have the option for the traditional experience unless you enter Portal. That alienates a significant chunk of your fan base. And while you know doing this in Portal seems easy enough, uh, you can quite quickly forget that the game isn't filling that Portal lobby for you. So unless you have a significant following online or a lot of friends, you're going to be stuck playing Battlefield 2042 with bots. And honestly, I have very few gripes about Portal. I think it is likely to be the saving grace for Battlefield 2042, and it actually works. I've only found one issue, and that is uh, that the games that I create are almost always out of region. That is a minor uh, problem. I'm sure that that will get resolved very, very quickly, uh, but I do want to acknowledge it. In general, though, overall, in its current state, Battlefield 2042 is a frustrating experience, from bugs to design decisions. For me, and for many other people that I've talked to, it is death by a thousand cuts. It seems like every time I start to enjoy something, an issue, rears its ugly head and it all adds up unfortunately again i'm not the only one who thinks that lastly i'm frustrated dice didn't get more development time with battlefield 2042. i know devs will continue to work hard to correct issues with the game uh, believe me you need to be supportive of the developers you know please treat them uh, like people, right, as you would typically do, um, trying to be understanding. They are doing their best, okay? But in the meantime, you know, we are in this position that seems strangely familiar, right? Uh, it's exactly where we were with the launch of Battlefield Five. Uh, the community is pissed off, and we have no guarantee EA will support the game beyond what has been announced for the first season of content. Uh, and that to me is very frustrating. Uh, I'm gonna end the video here uh, because if I don't, I'm just gonna get more irritated. I, I think I've kind of said what I need to say. If you guys have followed the channel for a long time, I really try to be a positive person. I believe you reap what you sow in that regard. I'm gonna continue to make content for Battlefield 2042 on details and other interesting things. I am going to continue to try and enjoy the game. I've been a Battlefield fan since 1942. I'm not gonna stop anytime soon. Uh, I will tell you, you know, don't expect me to make negative videos just because it is popular to do so. Uh, I'm somebody who, you know, uh, if I have something to say, I only want to say it once, but uh, you know, it bears repeating. Uh, I am very disappointed. Uh, with the launch of Battlefield 2042. I do want to open the floor to you. Tell me what you think about the game. Uh, developers read these comments, and if I do get a chance to provide feedback, I would really love to hear from you. Normally I say, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, but uh, you know, this isn't a super positive video, so I'll say something along the lines of, uh, if you share my frustrations, leave a like. We'll leave it at that. Uh, if you want to stay informed of future Battlefield content, obviously I'll be covering things like bug fixes, uh, quality of life improvements, uh, any DLC news, anything like that. Uh, make sure you subscribe, tap the bell to get notified of future videos. Uh, and as always, thanks for watching.